Good morning, everybody. Pastor Rick here, Broadman Baptist Church. This is the Broadman Word for May 11th, 2022. And we're going to talk about putting it all together here today. Um, over the last several weeks, we've been talking uh, both in my sermons at church and here on Easter and living out Easter, living resurrected. And uh, we had talked about living out uh, the authority of Jesus Christ, because that's what you have. He left it with you. Um, he left you very clear instructions on what to do. Uh, the Great Commission, as we call it, we talked about um, you having um, apostolic authority here. Uh, we always think of the original 12 apostles and then, of course, 13. And if you consider Paul and um, Barnabas um, later with separate commissions, um, you know, a total of uh, 15. But anyway, we always think of them um, very reverently, and we should. They accomplish amazing things. Um, but they were not the only apostles. Um, everybody who's ever accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior um, received the Great Commission uh, from Jesus Christ himself through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and so that commission then is what authorizes you on behalf of Jesus to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, to be a um, priest of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So um, living out that authority needs to have some significance in your life. Uh, you need to understand who you are in the kingdom, what role you have uh, to play. And it is the role of an apostle. Uh, we are modern day apostles. We also talked about living without doubt. Um, we talked about uh, how there can be no doubt in us about the resurrection, the resurrected Christ in our life, in it, or God, or the Bible, or any of these things. Because if there is in us, then we make ourselves no different than the world, which is full of questions and doubts. It then hampers our witness, blocks our evangelism, uh, because others will see the doubt and the unsurety in us. So we can't be doubting Thomases. We must be a people of faith, faith in the resurrected Christ and everything that came with it. That is now living in us, expressed through us in this uh, modern day. And we also lived, uh, talked about um, living out our individual purpose, um, the evangelistic um, element of the Great Commission. Jesus gave us all from that very first day um, when he ascended uh, to heaven to be with the Father uh, until every Christian from that day forward has the same commission. Uh, we have the same job. It has never changed. So the degree to which we live that out in whatever giftedness we were given to live it out uh, and in living, thus living in the will of God, we fulfill our purpose in the kingdom. We can then know that we are in fact um, forwarding the good purposes of God here uh, through our work, which he laid out for us to do. We also talked about um, a little bit in, in church about the significance of the uh, ascension and what the um, apostles did um, after that. You know, they must have felt lonely and scared and really not completely sure what to do. Jesus gave them uh, a plan and he told them to wait for some authority and power um, that would come. And so they did. Um, but they didn't just do so statically. Um, they went back to Jerusalem. They prayed together corporately. Um, they went to temple. They lived out um, the gospel of Jesus Christ while they were waiting for this uh, authority. And so uh, the Holy Spirit then came at Pentecost. And so we are about 28 days from Pentecost. It's actually um, in the Greek, uh, Pentecoste, uh, which means 50. And the original church considered 
uh, Pentecost, the 50th day of Easter. It's an important designation. It's not 50 days after Easter. Um, it's the 50th day of Easter. And so that is when um, things all came together. Um, and we're going to take a look here for a couple minutes at what that means, because that's, you know, our theme today, putting it all together. And we learn from Acts what the early church did. Uh, we learn about um, after the ascension, Peter gathering everybody together. Um, they went to Jerusalem. They corporately prayed. So that's item number one. Uh, we need to be engaged in corporate prayer. That mean, simply means prayer together, congregational prayer. Um, and we need to do so regularly. Um, they also um, went about the business of the church, structurally speaking. They had to replace Judas and they did some other things and they assigned um, a, a way to get that done. They, they got church processes going. And so we need to be diligent in the processes of our church, the missions that we have, the ministries that we have. We need to serve in those things. Uh, we need to make sure that the functions of the church are um, going well, that they're fully staffed, that they are um, receiving our best efforts and our best support. Uh, not only because it's necessary for the essential function of the church, but if we're going to call ourselves a New Testament church, a church of Christ, right? We're going to need to do it the way the church did it. And when you look at um, the formation of the church under Peter and then James in Jerusalem, that's what they did. Um, they got about the functional business of the church, uh, standing up ministries and uh, having people um, begin to carry out those functions. That's what's exampled for us. If we don't do that, or to the extent we don't do that well, um, we will have that level of success as a church. So the various ministries that we have are not just things to put on your calendar, not just things me or Kyle or the other folks will be talking to you about. It's not just trying to get you to do things. It's the essential functions of the church as example to us uh, from the book of Acts, the original church handbook. And then um, we talked about uh, living out um, our evangelical purposes. Uh, and that is something that we all need to get in tune with and work on. And we also need to uh, be able to have our own witnessing walk that produces um, some sort of fruit. Now, you may not be the converting person. You may not be the, the final conversation, but that's okay. Um, it takes on average about seven contacts before somebody uh, decides to um, dedicate their life uh, to the Lord. So you might be number one, you might be number five, maybe you get lucky and you're number seven and you get to see the benefit of all that other work. But then comes the Holy Spirit and the importance of the Holy Spirit really puts it all together. Um, Jesus was with the apostles for 40 days um, after the res beginning with the resurrection. And then there was about a 10 day period where he had told them to wait. Um, we're waiting on Jesus now to return, but they didn't just sit around and wait and wonder and be scared or hesitant or not conducting the business of the church, not praying. Um, they didn't do that. During that 10 days, they were active. Um, and as I've just explained to you, they got about being Christians. So in today's world, we're still waiting on Jesus Christ and nobody knows when that day is going to come. Uh, but we have to be just as active as the early church was when they were unsure of when um, the power uh, from Christ would come. And so we need to be just as active and dedicated to the purposes of the church, the kingdom, uh, and forwarding the gospel of Jesus Christ as they were then, because that is the example that God left for us. Now, on Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit finally does descend on the 12 and everybody else who was there, what an amazing thing. It ties things all together. 
we had God in his work in the world all through um, the Old Testament. And then we had the forecast of the Messiah and then the Messiah came uh, in the form of Jesus Christ. And he had his ministry and all the prophecy fulfilled in that. And then his proclamation of um, the intercessor, the, um, the guide would come. Uh, the authority would come, and that is the completion of the uh, process, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, finally come uh, on the day of Pentecost, all three together descend on this um, crowd of people, and what an amazing thing, uh, what a wonderful, uh, glorious day it was, and finally, um, they had what um, Jesus had promised them. They had um, their individual gifts. They had their um, authority from, from Jesus Christ. Um, they had uh, access to heaven. They had the power that they had been waiting on, the power that Jesus told them would come. And so they now use that uh, to go out into all of the world. Um, and spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and to uh, attempt to bring all uh, in reconciliation to the cross, the cross of Christ. So, um, as we're rounding the corner here, as we're in these 40 days headed for the 50th day, which is on um, June 5th, that's Pentecost Sunday, um, I want you to start thinking about how it is you're going to put all of this together because that's um, our goal. That's the completion date um, for our, our ministry. We should all be fully developed and fully organized and we should have a plan. It's not going to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect. Nobody expects that of you. But we need to, um, on Pentecost Sunday, the goal of what I've been preaching to you, the goal of what we've been talking about, is for by then you to have a complete understanding of what it is um, to be living resurrected, to be an Easter person, not an Easter observer, to live Easter and not just celebrate an Easter holiday, to actually um, be a living part of the resurrected Christ and his ministry of reconciliation by using the Holy Spirit to discern the will of God in your life and then having the strength, courage, and will also through the Holy Spirit to pick up your cross, bear it, and run with it out into the world as God intended for you to do. So that's putting it all together. That's where we're headed. That's the goal. And I sincerely hope that you put serious thought and prayer and um, resources uh, into bringing this about for you. Listen, I love you. You have a marvelous day, and I'll talk to you next time.